Okay, y'all turn to Mark 1. Mark 1 1. <coughs> Take this slow and try and straighten out some stuff here. Alright, Mark 1 1 says, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what does beginning mean? The start. The start, right? Here's where it starts. Now, watch what he says next. As it is written, then this beginning is according to prophecy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So then, when, according to this, is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ? As it is written, it began when whoever this prophet is showed up. Who is it? John. It's John the Baptist. Okay. Now, look, I put this up here, but we're going to get it. This ain't Adam over here. I give myself a lot of room, right? So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to say, okay, here's John. All right. John the Baptist. Now, John shows up and it says it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and write up here. The gospel. What's gospel mean? Good news of Jesus Christ. Alright. Now just to put a bookend on it, just hold Mark and flip over to uh, 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse uh, 6. Paul tells the Thessalonians, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. When did Paul promise the Thessalonians rest? When the Lord is revealed, right? So I just put the Lord over here, do it like this, and say, Here's the Revelation of the Lord. Okay. He says, rest with us when uh, uh, Lord uh, Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Is he coming in flaming fire? Mm -hmm. Taking vengeance on them that know. What tense is no? When he comes, is it no? That know not God and that obey, what tense is obey? Obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then when the Lord comes over here, is he going to take vengeance on some people? And why is he taking vengeance on them? Because they're rejecting what? What word? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Then common sense now, not not... Don't act like me and just jump on some common sense. Is the gospel of Jesus Christ going to be preached right up till the day the Lord comes? If, the, if He's going to be pour out vengeance on people who know not the gospel, he, Paul certainly ain't saying that they didn't know it back here in the first century. They've been in the ground, haven't they? So when He comes, if He pours out vengeance on they that know not and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ, then the gospel of Jesus Christ must be being preached, right? Does that make sense? Okay, go back over to Mark. Uh, Mark 1.1 1, 1 again. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written. Then this beginning was prophesied, as it is written in the prophets. And it turns out... It's quoting two different prophets here. King James Bible says prophets because it quotes Malachi and Isaiah. If you get a new Bible, you know what it will say right here? As it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, and it ain't written in Isaiah, it's written in Malachi. That's a big blatant error, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, hold, flip, flip, hold Mark and flip back over to Malachi, right before Matthew.
Alright. Malachi 3 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Now, who's the messenger? John. John. And the Lord. Now, is John the Lord? No. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Then I've got the messenger. That's John, right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. But after John's coming who? Jesus. Jesus. So I draw Jesus here. <clears throat> and Jesus Christ is called the messenger of the covenant. Not of a covenant, of the covenant. Well, what does that mean, the messenger of the covenant? What's his message going to be? It's going to be a covenant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, is it the covenant, if I just come back over here, when John shows up, are the Jews under a covenant? Mm -hmm. All right, they're under a Moses' law, right? And Moses' law is called the Old Covenant. So when Jesus Christ comes, the messenger of the covenant, either He's coming confirming this covenant, or He's coming with a new covenant. Right? Go to Luke 16. If y'all are holding something, let go of it. I don't know what I'm... I can't ever remember what I tell y'all to hold. Luke 16, 16. Alright, Luke 16, 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John. John who? John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. Then how long were the law and the prophets preached as the covenant to adhere to? Until John. Now that doesn't mean they're, they're, they stop and they're nailed to the cross. It means starting with John is something new beginning to be preached. Mm -hmm. Is that in accordance with what we just saw was the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Okay. Now the law of Moses I put in green because it's a physical thing, isn't it? But it said that the gospel of Jesus Christ... From that same time, he also said, the kingdom of God is preached, right? Okay. So then beginning with John, I've got the kingdom of God being preached, and it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, any, any questions about that so far? Okay, go back to Mark 1. Mark 1.14. It says, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and uh, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Then when the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ starts, and the kingdom of God is begin beginning to be preached, what did we just read Jesus Christ is preaching? The gospel, the gospel of, of the kingdom. Of the kingdom of God. Then do we have some synonymous terms here so far? Yeah, we do, don't we? Okay, go over to, uh, I tell you, go to Luke chapter, uh, give me a second to find it. Go to Luke 9. In Luke 9, he, he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And uh, Peter says, thou art the Christ. And in verse 30, Luke, I'm sorry, 8.30. I'm telling y'all the wrong verse. I'm sorry, guys. Luke 8.30. It says, he charged them that they should tell no man, and he began to teach them. So here's another starting point, isn't it? Now, has he been preaching the gospel of the kingdom? He has been, right? It says, He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. Where are you? Where are you at? Luke 8, 31. 
<laughs> I'm in Mark, y'all. I'm sorry. I found what I was looking for in Mark. Y'all stay in Luke. I'll go over there. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, where are y'all in Luke 7? Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke 8. I wonder what is going on there. Uh, uh, different version here. Bible. <laughs> I can't even remember what I'm trying to do now. I'm sorry, y'all. You want to go back to Mark? Uh, yeah, we're going back to Mark. Start. No, I tell you, go, go to Luke 7. We'll do it this way. I'm sorry, y'all. Luke 7. Luke 7. Oh, Dina's hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in Luke 7 it says, uh, verse 24, when the messengers of John were departed, John the Baptist, it says he began to speak unto the people concerning John. Now remember, John sent to Jesus before John gets killed, he's in jail, and he sends his disciples to him and says, are you really the Christ? Y'all remember the yeah. story, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Then what's going on with John in prison? Yeah. He's doubting, he's wavering, right? So verse 24, when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went you out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind. Did you go all the way out beyond the Jordan, he asked them, to see the, the bushes blowing around? No. Verse 25, what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? In other words, did they go out there because they heard John was such a snappy dresser? No. He said, Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled live in, or, and live delicately are in kings. So if they wanted to see a snappy dresser, they'd go to the palace, not out to the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. He says, What went you out for to see? A prophet. Yet, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. Then was John a prophet? Yeah. Well, let's write it up here. John is a, a messenger, and he's a prophet. Okay. He says, This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is, present tense when he was speaking, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Alright, was John a prophet? Yeah, yeah. But, when Jesus was speaking before the cross, was John in the kingdom of God? No. Now, what was John doing in prison? We just, we just talked about he was doubting, what he, right? Okay. So now Jesus says that there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. He said, but he that is, present tense, least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Who was in the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus. John said, there's one coming after that's greater than me. I'm not, I shouldn't be touching his shoelaces, right? How was Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God? Was he physically in it? By faith. What did Jesus Christ have before the cross that nobody else had? Faith. faith. Who's the first person that believed the gospel of Christ? Jesus Who's the only one before the Christ before the cross that believed he was going to be raised from the dead? Jesus. He is. Did the apostles believe it? Mm -hmm. Who's the only one that even thought he was going to die? He is. When he tells them, to flip over, go to Luke. Uh, um, Luke eight. Luke eight. Luke eight. Verse Maybe I'll find it. Luke 18. When Jesus first tells the twelve that he's going to die, be buried, be raised again. The very first time he tells them that, do y'all remember what Peter said? Not so, Lord. So, Lord. This will not be unto thee. Y'all remember what Jesus told him? Get thee behind me, Satan. Right? So then, when he first tells them about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, do they believe it? No. Now, he continues to tell them. So, is Jesus Christ preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yeah. But he's not preaching all the revelation of the mystery. He's slowly trying to reveal these things to him, isn't he? Now, 
he begins to tell them that he's going to die, and they can't believe that. Okay, they, they want no part of this. Now watch verse 31. Uh, Luke 18, 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spit it on. They shall scourge him, put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they, the apostles, understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. So, I've got the twelve on this side of the cross. I'm just going to draw them all like, okay, here we got, here's the twelve. And among the twelve, do they believe Jesus Christ is about to die? Once Jesus Christ has died, do they believe after the day after the cross that He's going to be raised from the dead? When Jesus dies, He dies, they don't believe it. He finally dies, and what, ha what do they basically do? They give up on the kingdom. Because what type of a kingdom was Israel looking for? Physical. And what kind of a kingdom had the Lord come to set up? Spiritual. So since they were walking by sight and not faith, they missed it, didn't they? Now, these men do not believe Jesus is going to die after the cross. If I just bring them over here on this side of the cross. Same men here. We'll say this is the twelve. And I bring the twelve over here. Draw me some of them in here like this. Okay, here they all are. And Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. And Mary Magdalene comes and tells them, Hey, the Lord's risen from the dead. And what do these men say? Not so. Yeah. She's crazy. So then, had they yet, after the cross, believed the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Okay? So why was Jesus Christ the only one that was in the kingdom before the cross? He's the only, He's the only one that believed, right? Now, these men can't believe it. It's hid from them. Flip over to Luke 24. Luke 24, uh, 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Now y'all think with me here. If they think they're seeing a spirit, do they believe Jesus is risen from the dead? No, they think they're seeing a ghost or a vision, right? Okay. He said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why are the thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he saith unto them, Have you here any meat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. Now why was that so important? It just proved he's raised in a real body. Mm -hmm. Folks, if he was a Casper the ghost and he threw something in his mouth and it went right down to the floor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so he's real. He's raised from the dead, right? What did they just believe on right here at this moment? Mm -hmm. they, they believed he's right. Now watch what happens. 44. He said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. Now, what he's fixing to say, did they understand it when he spoke and was yet with them? They never got it, did they? Yeah. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Did he just do something right here in Luke 24, whereby they could now understand the Scriptures? It doesn't say they understood everything. It says they can now understand, right? Hey, hold, hold your hand there. Go over to 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to come right back. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 2. Alright, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Paul says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. In other words, they've been hidden, hadn't they? Mm -hmm. Were they hid to these apostles right up until this moment? Mm -hmm. They were, it says. 
But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Alright, I'm going to draw Paul over here. And just put Paul right over here. When Paul gets saved, what does the Lord do with Paul? Does he give him something? Yeah, he, he begins to reveal the mystery to him. But before he can ever begin revealing mysteries to him, what's he got to give him? The, the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. The Spirit, right? Remember what Jesus Christ told the twelve? He said, I'm about to go away. Where I'm going, you can't go. Where was he going to go? He's going into the spiritual realm. He said, but if I go away, I'll send back someone unto you, the Comforter, and he will teach you all things, won't he? When Paul got saved, was Paul given a the seal of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. yes. Did that Spirit allow Paul to begin to see things? Yeah. Okay. What do y'all reckon is keeping these 12 men from being able to see? Spirit. They don't have the Spirit yet. How could they get the Spirit before Jesus Christ ascends up first? They can't. Who's got to be the first one in the kingdom of God by faith? Jesus Christ. He's got to have the preeminence in all things, doesn't he? So is he the first one in the kingdom by faith? Yes. Who's the first one in the kingdom by sight? Where it happened with Jesus Christ when he's raised? Folks, Jesus Christ has to have the preeminence in all things, doesn't he? Is he the head over all things to the church? Mm -hmm. How could the church start before Jesus Christ is in it? Good. Jesus Christ is the head, the firstborn from the dead. So now, I've got these men here. Jesus Christ has been risen. He's been uh, given the kingdom. And can he now give out the Spirit, the seal of the Spirit to whoever he can? So he says here in verse 13, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Then is the Holy Ghost a teacher? Mm -hmm. Ain't that what he said in John 16? He was going to send back his spirit, the comforter, that would teach them? That's what he said, isn't it? Now verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. When he tells these guys before the cross, I'm about to go to Jerusalem and die, Peter said, oh, that's foolish. Why was it foolishness to him? He didn't have the Spirit. He's a carnal man. He's not saved. He doesn't have the Spirit, does he? After the cross, when Jesus Christ tells them again over here, when Mary Magdalene says, the Lord's risen from the dead. You remember what they said? That's foolishness, right? But when Jesus Christ appeared and they saw him, he did something, and at that moment it says he opened their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. What does it take for a person to understand the Scriptures? The Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Right? That makes sense so far? Alright, go over to uh, John chapter... Well, let's... Y'all still got Luke... All right, Luke 24, let's read on. Watch the very next thing he tells them, verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Now folks, they don't understand all the Scriptures. But has he given them the thing that makes it possible? Yeah. You know how you know they don't understand all the Scriptures? Because right after this, after they get this, they're standing there and they ask him, Lord, are you going to restore again the kingdom to Israel? They're still looking for physical kingdom, aren't they? Okay. Now watch the next thing he tells them, verse 46. He said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you're witnesses of these things. What does behoove mean? Benefit. All right. My granny used to use that word all the time. She would tell me, it'll behoove you to listen to me. Now, when she said that, I knew what she meant. Would it be to my benefit to listen to what she said? Mm -hmm. Why did it behoove or benefit Christ to die? 
So he could save us. What was he dying for? Our sins. Our sins. What's he starting to reveal to them here? Why it behooved him to die. Hey, does everybody see that? Did he begin to explain to them right here why he needed to die? Well, what must have happened that makes it possible for them to begin to understand? They must be given the Spirit, right? Flip over to John 20. We're going to read the exact same account now. John 20, verse 19. It says, The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. This is just what we just read in Luke, okay? Uh, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. When he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So that's exactly what we just read in Luke. This is the same event. Now watch what it says. Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. What tense is receive? What was he doing to them there? He was giving them the Holy Ghost. But how? Same way me and you get it, folks. It was inside of them. The kingdom of God is within you. Did they just believe that Jesus had been risen from the dead? And what just happened to the twelve? They got saved. What does God say? Paul says God's will is that all men be saved, then come unto the knowledge of the truth. How are they going to understand anything before they're saved? They're not. What about me and you? We're not. So the moment that they believe, the Spirit is given them. The seal of the Spirit. Okay, It's there. It's in them. The kingdom of God is within them. But how is it in them? By words. By faith. Okay. When did Paul enter into the kingdom of God? When he believed. The moment he believed, what did he receive? The Spirit. The same thing they received. Now, that's not the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, did he put his Spirit within them or did he pour his Spirit upon them? Was it by faith or was it visible by signs and wonders? Folks, when they got the Spirit poured on them, there wasn't no doubt. They spoke in other languages. They healed. They raised the dead. I mean, it... All that hooping and hollering the Pentecostals do ain't got nothing on what these men did that day. Did anybody need to doubt whether these men were speaking for God? Mm -hmm. They could see it, couldn't they? Can you see the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, It cometh not with observation. Then when He breathed on them, these men got what it is required to be able to begin to understand the Word of God, didn't it? Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. So, is the gospel of Jesus Christ slowly being developed? Okay. Now, these men here believe this. These men are, by faith, transferred into the kingdom of God. Okay, I'm going to go on and write the kingdom of God up here. And what is the kingdom of God also called? The house of God. Okay, flip over to uh, Ephesians 2. <laughs> Right, Ephesians 2, uh, 19. Now therefore ye, Gentiles, are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Then are we in the same house with the apostles and prophets? He says, in whom all the building... Fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also, us Gentiles, are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. When you get into the house of God, look, when God built His house back here, what did God do? He dwelt in it. The moment a person gets saved over here, what happens? They get the promise of the Spirit. Who is this Spirit first promised to? Abraham, way back here. It's the promise. 
Okay. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then, this promise that was made, Jesus Christ, a Jew, is the first person to believe the gospel and be in the kingdom by faith. The twelve go into the kingdom by faith. But look what he told them. Go back to, uh, just go to Mark 16. Huh? We'll use that. I've had, uh, let me see about how to say this. I've had things that just have been like bothering me for uh, maybe a year, two years, and I just keep studying it, putting it off, studying it, putting it off, and just keep asking, Lord, show me, show me. And all of a sudden, a few things are beginning to fit into place, and some big problems that I had for a long time are going away, and I'm very thankful for that. Now watch what he says in Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. This is the same thing we just read. Now watch how you know. He upbraided them with their unbelief. So this is the same thing, right? We just read. Now watch. Unbelief, hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now what did he just tell these 12 men right here? Go to where? Did he just command them to go to all the world? But do they do that? Mm -hmm. They don't do it, do they? But did he command them to do it? Yeah. What does it take to get these men to go to a Gentile? Right. Acts 10, what did the Lord have to do to get Peter to go to Cornelius? Oh, he had to show him a vision three times, and when Peter got there, he still didn't want to be there. He walked in, he said, You know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company with the Gentile. Right? Did God tell them back here before the cross in, in Matthew 10, go not into the way of the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Did He tell them right after the cross, go to all nations? Mm -hmm. Does that mean they went immediately to all nations? Mm -hmm. No. Is He, when He saves Paul, does He save Paul for a purpose? Yep. Who's Paul going to be the apostle to? Gentiles. Gentiles. What does that mean? All nations, right? How in the world are these men ever going to accept his converts into the same house with them without God showing them? Ain't going to happen. So what does God do before he sends Paul out to the Gentiles? He sends Peter to one, doesn't he? Now, when Peter goes there and preaches to them, he's preaching to Cornelius, and the second that they believed, did they get the Spirit? Did they need to be baptized? No. No. Now, if you look at it in the context here, look at Mark 15, or 16, 15 again. He said unto them, Go you into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, I don't want to bore you all with this, but you check it out yourself. If we believe the King James Bible, it came from the Textus Receptus. We're going to have to accept it as being true also. Uh, baptized there is passive. In other words, it's not something you do, it's something that's done to you. You're acted upon. The moment a person believes, what did Paul say happens? They're saved and they're baptized by the Spirit into what? House of God, one body. Did these men get into the house? There ain't but one way they can get in there, folks. Water ain't going to do it. So we jump on that and say that's water, but that ain't what it says. The minute these men believe, by faith, did they get placed in the house? Mm -hmm. Did Paul get placed in the house? Mm -hmm. Paul also got water baptized. Was it necessary? Mm -hmm. Did Cornelius get in there without a baptism? Mm -hmm. Now let's prove that that's what this verse says, okay? The thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus tell him, today that will be with me in paradise? Did he get water baptized? Y'all see how that can't be, can it? Mm -hmm. Now watch, who's the man that has it revealed unto him that these things are spiritual? Paul. Paul says, by one spirit are we all placed, baptized into one body, right? All into one body. All? All the believers. 
Now go over and see when Peter uh, understands this. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. And that raspberry creamer is so good. <laughs> Y'all had that one? White chocolate raspberry? Mm. You still, you're not on your diet. Not just so. Yeah, I'm still on it. <laughs> I'm down 19 pounds. <laughs> okay. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Peter says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water, the like figure, then the ark was a figure or a type, wasn't it? What saved Noah and his family? They got inside that ark. Who shut the door? Y'all know what it says the Lord did with the door? Yes. Could they get out of there? Mm -hmm. What's the archetype of? Salvation. Salvation, the house of God. Okay, When you get in there, what does the Lord do to? Seals you that moment. Now watch what he says. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth. What tense is that? Present tense. Doth also now save us. Did Peter recognize that they were saved by a baptism? Yes. Everybody says, that's right, water. Watch what he himself says. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. What did Peter just say there? He said, baptism into the house of God spiritually saves us too. Not washing your flesh spiritual. Folks, doesn't that make sense? Okay. How can you prove that Peter understood what Paul was saying there? Go to Acts 15. Hey, there's things that get said, and, and look, I've been guilty of it as anybody, and I'm sure I'll still do it, but, all right, okay, what we say is, men will say, uh, they were always preaching this gospel before the cross. No. Was, was this message steadily revealed through? Yeah. Did they know all these details Paul preached before the cross? No. Did Jesus begin to tell them? Who's the only one that believed it? Jesus Christ. After the cross, does he continue to tell them? Yeah. But when people say, well, you'd say that what Paul preached over here is different. Yes, it is different than what was preached back here because it's, it's fewer things have been revealed. Yeah. This is progressive revelation, right? Now watch what he says in Acts 15. Paul has preached to Gentiles. And some Jews said, okay, those Gentiles can only be saved if they get circumcised and keep the law, right? Now watch verse 7. When there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. What gospel? Gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Did Cornelius hear the gospel and believe? He says next, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Was there any difference? Mm -hmm. And put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. Was there any difference between Peter and the Gentiles that had been saved? Mm -hmm. Now watch next. Now therefore why tempt you God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Not Paul's disciples, the disciples. Peter is proving Paul by Peter's own preaching. Folks, Peter is saying here, you ain't got no right to tell Paul's people to do that. I preached to Gentiles and they got in here just like me and you. So watch his next thing here. He says, Now therefore why tempt ye to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? What's the yoke? The law. Which neither our fathers nor we were, what tense is that? Able to bear. Was Peter trying to bear the law any longer? Mm -hmm. Was Peter trying to bear the law? Does it appear in Acts chapter 12 when he's in Antioch? Mm -hmm. And somebody straightens him out, don't they? Who straightened him out? Oh. Who's the man that saw this law is finished? Oh. It's Paul, folks. 
Paul gets these things revealed to him. But does that mean that they're separated by this? No. The truth is the truth. I don't care who you are, the truth is the truth. So he says now in verse 11, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Now, we shall be saved. Again, when you read Old English, check it out. Be real careful with it. It doesn't mean at some point in the future. It's aorist tense. You check it out. Don't believe me. In other words, I cook... I won't say that. Lexi cooked breakfast this morning in order that I should eat. Has that all happened already? Am I telling you why she cooked breakfast? Yeah. She cooked so that I could eat. She could eat, right? But it's all past tense. Why? How did Peter and them get saved? They believed in order that they were saved. How did the Gentiles get saved? Same way. Same way. So one more time, read it. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord. In other words, I believe in order that I'm saved. I can be saved. We believe in order that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Is there any difference? None. There ain't a lick of difference between them. Does that make sense so far? Okay, let's go back and deal with something about John. Uh, go back over to uh, Luke. Uh, let me see. Was... Uh, go to Luke uh, 13. All right. Now, we read a while ago that John was a prophet, didn't we? But we also read that John was not in the kingdom of God, was he? Okay, Because Jesus said, He that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Then there's no way John was in the kingdom of God, was he? Prove that. Did John believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? He didn't even know Jesus, did Christ. He has his, his faith's wavering, right? Now, he goes on here, verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door. What do y'all reckon this door is in? The house of God. Y'all think about Noah's Ark. You know, I can close my eyes and I can almost see the people beating on the door, scratching, hanging on. Was there any getting in once God shut the door? No. Immediately God shuts the door and what comes next? Water. Water. The wrath of God is poured out, isn't it? Now he says, They stand at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He shall answer and say unto you, I know not whence you are. Remember in Matthew 7? How did those people in Matthew 7 say, what, what did they make, what did they claim made them Jesus' disciples? The works. The works they had done. He says, Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Are they working for righteousness? Mm -hmm. They are. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. Will all the prophets be in the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Is John a prophet? Yes. Then is John going to be in the kingdom of God? Yes. Was he before the cross? No. It's impossible. Jesus Christ is the first person in this body. Jesus Christ is the first person in this house. Jesus Christ is the first one in his church. Now, what does Paul have revealed unto him about the nature of his church? It's his body. How is it his body? Jesus Christ tried to tell them back here. Did they understand it? Let me show you how. just a couple ways. Go over to John 15. John 15, 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, dwell is abide, and I in you. Huh? Is he telling these Jewish men that they're going to be in him and he's going to be in them? Did they understand it? No. Nope. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. And abide don't mean to endure, it means to dwell. Okay? He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. We just read that. Lord, Lord, let us in. No. Nope. To be in the house of God is to be what? In Christ. Now watch verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. How was Jesus Christ abiding in these men? By faith, by words, by spirit. Were they in him? By faith. When was Jesus Christ put into the kingdom of God by sight? When he's resurrected, right? Is he the first fruits? The firstborn from the dead, right? When will Paul be physically in the kingdom of God like Christ? When he's changed and put in there, won't he? So, between the change and the physically going in there, what does a person have to walk by? By faith. Will you need that faith when you are by sight in that kingdom? That faith will go away. We're saved today by hope, aren't we? Hey, there, there's three, we've never even got to the notes, but there's three phases or tenses of salvation. Is a person saved the moment they trust Christ as their Savior? Is there a future salvation of their body? In between, does Paul tell us we need to work on our mind? Yeah. He sure does, doesn't he? He tells Timothy that if he'll abide the good doctrine, if he'll rightly divide the truth from the air, that he will save himself and those that hear him. Save them from what? False doctrine. He'll he'll get the judgment seat of Christ. He'll it, all that'll be he'll be leg up. I'll say. Okay. Um, all right. Go over to uh, John seventeen. John 17, 8, Jesus is praying. He says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. They have received them, and have known surely that I came out of thee. They have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thy are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. So he says, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. One in what? In Christ. Now he says, uh, he's talking about he losing the son of perdition. Verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Why are they not of the world? Because they believe they've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Physically or by faith? Okay, now verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. If a person is in a world that they're not part of, and they're supposed to be delivering a message, what do you call that? It's an ambassador, isn't it? Now he goes on. Uh, 17, 18, let me find it. Sanctified, 19. Uh, verse 21. Well, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Who would that fit? Remember what he told Thomas? Thomas, you've seen and believe. Blessed are they which haven't seen and believe, right? He says that they all may be one. You mean everybody that believes on him through the word will be one? It says it. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 
I mean, is he telling them point blank they're going to be in Christ? Yeah. He's praying to the Father, isn't he? Then did Jesus Christ know these things? Mm -hmm. Certainly he knew it. When did the twelve begin to learn it? Over here, folks. Okay. Now let's prove that they understood that he, the dying for sin part, they understood before Paul. Okay, let's let's show you that. Let's go over to First Timothy or no Acts. People make the gospel of Christ the mystery to be the forgiveness of sin, and that that ain't true. Alright. Um, Alright. In Acts 5. Now, is Acts 5 before Paul gets saved? It is, okay? Alright. Acts 5.29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Did they know it? Do they know it before Paul? But do they understand all the things associated with being joined unto Christ? No, but they're going to understand it through Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a greater mystery, the bulk of the mystery given unto Paul, i just write it here, has to do with who Paul is going to preach to. Did Israel even consider being in the same house with Gentiles? No. Did Jesus Christ teach them about His Spirit being in them? Okay, go to Colossians 1. Colossians 1.25 Colossians 1.25, Paul's talking about the church, which is his body. Verse 25, he says, Where have I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, the dispensing of something's dispensed, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery, singular, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery, singular, among the Gentiles, which is, here's the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. What's the mystery? Christ in you. Who's you? Gentiles. Oh, there's, there's Gentiles over here, right? What's the mystery Paul's talking about? Right. That Christ could be in these men and he could be in these the same way. Not through becoming a Jew, through the gospel. Everybody see how that works? So the full revelation of the mystery of the gospel is that the gospel of Jesus Christ save anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place. That the promises made unto Abraham, the promise of the Spirit, the covenant that involved giving the Spirit out, wasn't just limited to Israel, was it? It's going on Gentiles too. Okay, go to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation, the dispensing of the grace of God which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, singular, Skip the parentheses for now. The mystery, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles. Which ones? All of them, folks. Apostles. His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Is the Spirit the teacher? That, here's the mystery, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Well, hold on a minute. What promise of Christ, through, what is he talking about? Here, folks. This one right here. Okay, one more. more. Well, we got a little time. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3 6. Paul 
Paul tells these people, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Is that limited to Jewish people? Is it limited to people in the book of Acts? It doesn't say that. Now he says next, And the scripture, the Old Testament scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. What's a heathen? That's Gentile. us, folks. Pagan Gentiles, right? Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Is Paul's mystery that Jesus Christ was going to die for sin? No. Paul's mystery is that he was going to dwell in Gentiles. And was that preached before to Abraham? Yeah. What did God tell Abraham? In thee shall all nations be blessed. Was he telling him back here that this promise was going to all nations? What's Paul's mystery over here? That's it. Okay. Watch Galatians 3. Um, Verse uh, 13, Christ hath redeemed us, Israel, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Was the Spirit promised under that new covenant? Did the law, have to, as a covenant, have to be removed in order to do this? It did. Did Jesus Christ remove the law? Did he tell those 12 men going to all nations? Did they do it? Mm -hmm. But he's going to get it done, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So now this promise that was made to Abraham back there comes on anybody that will believe, doesn't it? It's the promise of the Spirit. What had to happen in order to make the Gentiles able to get into this house with the Jews that believe? Had to do away with the law. Okay, one more. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2.11. Boy, this, I used to, at first I learned something about this and it just blew my mind. I said, wow, that's the greatest thing ever. And then the more I started studying what I, a, a guy taught me, the more I started saying, wait a minute, boy, it got more and more and more confusing until I just studied myself in a circle and I had to quit even looking. It just had me so confused. Mm -hmm. Now, what? In perfect sense. Let's just read it. Verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. As long as this covenant is in effect, did a man have to be circumcised? No. If a Jew wanted to come into the promises and be God's people, or a Gentile, what's he going to have to do? Circumcised. circumcised. If he's uncircumcised, can he get into it? No. no. So he says, verse uh, 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off. Far off from what? The promises. Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. What made us able to get into the promises? The blood of Christ. Was it some future thing out here? Did it happen right here? Right here. Now he says, verse 14, For he is our peace. Now what does our refer to? Oh, circumcision and uncircumcision. We can't take our, the plural pronoun, and go all the way back to chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 and make it apply back there. That, you can't do that. Our refers back to the, it's a, to the antecedent, doesn't it? There's two groups here, circumcision and uncircumcision, isn't there? Okay, now he says, uh, uh, verse 14, For he is our peace who hath made both one. Who's both? Jew and Gentile, both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Something was dividing us, wasn't it? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to making himself of twain one new man, so making peace. What had to be done away with in order for God to form this house? Oh. What did Jesus Christ nail to the cross? Oh. Now is it possible? Yeah. So what's he tell them right after the cross? Go to all the world. Go to all the nations, right? Now watch us read on verse uh, 16. And that he might reconcile both. Who's the both? Jew and Gentile unto God in one body by the cross, 
having slain the enmity thereby. He came and preached peace to you which were far off from the promises and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Did Jesus Christ get the law out of the way? Mm -hmm. Did that make putting together the house of God possible? Mm -hmm. What do you mean you need to do today to get into that house? Amen. Amen. Just believe Jesus Christ died for all your sins. The moment you trust Jesus Christ, Paul says in Colossians 1 that you are translated into the kingdom of His dear Son by faith. Right? When will you be translated by sight? What is change? Change means translated, doesn't it? So is there a spiritual salvation? Is there a physical future salvation? Let's read one more verse real quick. We'll read Romans 5. When you see the word saved, these notes I gave you, I never even looked at them, but we'll, uh, this is more for tomorrow night anyway, <coughs> y'all can study it, but when you see the word saved or salvation, you got to figure out what, what tense, what's it talking about. For instance, Paul says, uh, uh, alright, I'm going to quote John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's it's talking about something that happens like that. Right? Now watch Romans 5.8. God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. That's saved, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Spiritually by faith. By His blood... We shall be saved from wrath through Him. Is there a future salvation in that verse? What's going to be saved from wrath? Bodies. Folks, what happened with Noah back here? When they shut the door on that boat, what happened? The bottom fell out. All the bodies perished. Was Noah and them saved from the wrath of God? Mm -hmm. What's coming over here? Same, Same thing. Are you appointed unto that? Mm -hmm. No, never said you weren't appointed unto trip, folks. The church has been in tribulation for two thousand years. I mean, look at Paul's life. Did Paul go through some tribulation? Yeah. He, there's been a doctrine presented about, you know, made this. Only in our country would people believe such a thing. But we've been led to believe that we'll never have to go through anything. They have people all over the world gone through horrible things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw some guys getting their head cut off because they wouldn't deny Jesus Christ. You know what a guy told me one time? He said, that's pitiful. And I said, yeah, it is. They're killing them folks over there. I said, but that, he said, yeah, and they dying for nothing. Mm. And I said, dying for nothing? I said, well, they, they asked them to reject Jesus Christ and they wouldn't do it. Y'all think that's for nothing? You know what the man told me? They don't even know the mystery. <laughs> and I said, well, huh, what? He said, them guys don't know how to rightly divide. That hit me like a ton of bricks when he told me that. I thought, something wrong here. Mm. I mean, look, I'm all in favor of rightly dividing like Paul told Timothy to do, but I'm not, you're going to tell me that that man would not deny Jesus Christ as his Savior and got his head cut off, and God ignores that because he don't know how... Acts 4.12. Yeah, Acts 4.12, yeah. Okay. All right, any questions? All right, good job. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you.